Well, well, uh, you could see in the, in the description of this video, uh, there is a link when you can download this Spirit Suite. This Spirit Suite contains the iron concentration in two different uh, iron supplements. So uh, my students uh, determined the iron mass in two different iron dietary supplements. We have uh, this supplement and this other one uh, quite in here. Uh, they determined the iron mass in a dietary supplement using four different calorimetric size. They used it as a salicylate aside, the tucyanid aside, the gallic acid aside, and they also used the Prussian blue aside. So they determined the iron mass in a dietary supplement using four different calorimetric size. Uh, after that, they, they asked me, uh, Professor, uh, just a, just a size. They provided some results. Uh, just a size. Uh, they provide the same results. Well, we must compare this size. Uh, size now, let us say, at the moment, you must know that the calibration range in the Chusianid SI and the Gallic Acid SI are one to five milligrams per liter of iron. Uh, salicylate SI was 4 to 20 milligrams of iron uh, per liter. And the Prussian blue SI was also 1 to 5 milligrams per liter of iron. Uh, the gallic acid SI uh, was carried out in two to 10 milligrams per liter of iron the, in the calibration range. This is the calibration range of the shows the size. The two cyanid SI and the Prussian blue SI were one to five milligrams per liter. Uh, you must know that the, uh, I have prepared the, the samples, I take a dietary supplement pill and I, did, I, and I boil it in diluted nitric acid to oxidize the iron 2 to iron 3. And I have a very concentrated uh, iron solution because uh, one iron supplement was diluted in 100 milliliters volumetric flask. Thus, I have uh, 400 milligrams per liter of iron solution that is very concentrated. So I have to dilute my sample solution to analyze it using, uh, using different calorimetric size. Uh, you must take in mind that the calibration range sample dilution uh, determine the concentration of a sample uh, when uh, determining lower concentrations uh, is difficult. You have a uh, reduced precision uh, when you are analyzing uh, slow, uh, low concentrations. So we have in here the iron mass in this dietary supplement. Uh, how could I say if all the size provides the sum concentration? I can say that all the size provide the sum result. Uh, one manner that I can do this is using one away and another. Uh, so uh, my Excel is in Portuguese language. Uh, I'm going to data. Uh, in English, it will be data, and here we have the two pack. Uh, it is in the same position in English version of Excel. So I'm going to here, 
And then I will select one away ANOVA. In Portuguese, it's fator único. ANOVA de fator único. And in English, one away. Uh, when I click in one away ANOVA, I, I have to enter in here the cells that I want to analyze. I will select the cells. And I, am, uh, I have uh, the difference that I have is between columns. So I am selecting columns and I will select the cell where it are going to place the results. So it runs one away and over. I get uh, a F calculated value lower than the critical value. Uh, what is the meaning of this? This means that this four aside did not provide the same results. They don't provide the same results. At this point, you should ask me, uh, just the one of these assays are different from the other three. All the assays were different. Uh, what uh, this assay uh, is equivalent to this water one, that all, all these are questions. How can I see this? Well, uh, I have shown in another video that Excel is a powerful tool. Spirit Suites are a powerful tool in, chem in chemistry teaching. But uh, some statistical tests, they, uh, you cannot do these tests using Excel. So you must use a commander. Well, we have in here uh, there. And in here you have a commander. Uh, I have uh, I have been talking about the R Commander because R Project is a software like MathLab, Octave, uh, Python. Uh, just kind of software needs that you type commands. You have the they are calling. We can call these softwares of programming languages. Uh, you have to type commands. Uh, and most of your students were not uh, are not familiarized with this kind of thing in type comments. But there is a, a plugin that runs inside of R project. It is R Commander. It, uh, in R Commander, you can do a lot of statistical tests just clicking in menus like in another software that uh, you are familiar. Uh, so. The first thing is to import your data to the first thing that you have to do is import your data to R Commander. Uh, R Commander can import data from several another uh, softwares, for example, Minitab uh, and, of course, Microsoft Excel. So, uh, in the description of the video, uh, you have the data shown as in this spirit suite. Uh, you must observe that uh, I have placed in here uh, the iron mass in the dietary supplement F and the iron mass in the dietary supplement V. Uh, in here, I have a qualitative variables that is the assay type. So just measurements, were carried out using solid slat assay. Chill's measurements in here were, were obtained using the chill cyanide assay. Uh, here are going to do statistical analysis uh, of a quantitative variation against a qualitative variable. Well, it is very simple to import your data from Microsoft Excel to R Commander. You just need to go to data, import data from, and of course, Microsoft Excel file. Uh, in here, you are going to select the speed suite that you want to import. Uh, you are going to, to place the speed suite that you want to import in any directory in your computer that is easy to you assess. For example, I, I, play, I put it, uh, my spread suite in my desktop. 
well, I select the split suite that I want to import to R Commander and click and open. My computer is thinking, thinking, thinking. Uh, now I can visualize the data set that I have imported. I just need to click in view data set. And in here, I can see the data set that I have imported to a commander. Well, uh, I can do statistical tests in a command. For example, I can go to statistics, mass, go to one away ANOVA, and to do one away ANOVA for iron mass in dietary supplement F. I'm going to apply. Okay. And I have the sum result that I have obtained using Microsoft Excel. And here I have the F value, and here I have the P value. That, the, that shows that my data was not equivalent. No? I have equivalent values when I have 0 0.005. Well, uh, how can I visualize uh, equivalence and no equivalence between my assays. I can go to graphs and they can go to box plots. I'm selecting my dietary supplement F, groups and assays, and I go to apply. Now it was generated my box plot. I have a box plot for the four assays that they have used. I have the data from gallic acid, uh, Prussian blue acai, Tucianida acai, and salicylate acai. As you can see in this picture, as you can see in the picture, uh, you can uh, you can observe, observe that I have a lower interquartile range for salicylate acai. I have a lower interquartile range. Why? because it is easy to determine higher concentrations than lower concentrations. And I have talked to you in the beginning of this video that uh, I use the more concentrated solutions to in this assay, in the salicylate assay. I can also see outliers, uh, just measurements are outliers. It's uh, just measurements get out of the the, the, the data set. The just values are maximums or minimum values. Uh, I always use this example when, when I am talking about box plots. Uh, if you have uh, 100, uh, if you pretend to, to show uh, the payment, the, the earnings of a, a group of people, you have 990 people uh, getting a salary of $1,000 and one person that have a $100,000 salary. And in the other side, you have 100 people that get $1,000. Uh, if you are going to say the, the margin and the average values, uh, you are going to see that in population that 99 people gets $1,000 and the one guy gets $100,000, you are going to see that the average was, uh, was 2000 where the median value was 1000 You think that the, the median wa was less affected by extreme values than the average value. So you have the average values in here, inches, black line. You have the average values in here. So in there, you can see uh, equivalence and non-equivalence between the tests. For example, I can see that the Prussian blue assay 
uh, provide, provide different results from the gallic acid assay. But I can say that salicylate assay provides close results from those obtained with the Prussian blue assay and two cyanide assay. Box plots are a very useful for data interpretation uh, and data comparison. Well, I can confirm these findings observed in box plots using the 2K test. How could I do that? Let me go into statistics, mans. Let me go into 108 and over again. But now I am going to select pairways, comparisons, and well chef test and go to apply. Now I can confirm my findings. For example, uh, the assays are compiled in pairs. Here I can see that the two cyanide assay and the gallic acid assay provide very close results. Salicylate and gallic acid size provides equivalent results, but not so equivalent results. Uh, I can see that the gallic acid size and then the Prussian blue size uh, provide different results. So I can, uh, using the family wise confidence levels, I, I can determine equivalence and no equivalence between the SIs. I can see that. These two assays are not equivalent, but these are not their two assays are very close, provide equivalent results, right? Uh, you can use a server of, of graphics in a commander that is very good to you analyze your data set. For example, we can go in graphs and they can go to dot plot. I am going to do a dot plot. Uh, for the iron supplement F, uh, I have selected the qualitative variable that you are assigned. Uh, I'm going to options. Uh, I take out the X axis. I'm going to OK. Now I can observe the dispersion of my data set. You can, uh, in the box plots, you observe that for two cyanide SI, and for, two, uh, and for the Prussian blue aside that I have a large interquartile range. But with the salicylate aside, I have a lower interquartile range. Uh, the dot plot can show you this. Uh, I, I can observe here for the dispersion of my data set that the Prussian blue aside uh, have a, a large interquartile range. Where I have a much lower interquartile range is using salicylate side. I can see that my data, uh, the iron mass determined using the salicylate side, um, is less uh, distributed than the data set that I obtained using the Prussian blue side. So you can uh, dot plots at a very uh, are very useful to you analyze the dispersion of your data set. Uh, quite in here, uh, I'm going to use so graphs. I can see, I can use for example, histograms. I'm going to do the histograms for the, for my data set uh, obtained for F dietary supplements. Uh, select a size and go to apply. And here I have the histograms of the iron mass determined, determined using choose four assays. I can observe in here that, look, uh, I can observe in here that the, I can observe that I have, um, uh, uh, how could they say that uh, a narrow of distribution for the salicylate SI, where I have a, 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 more, uh, a more dispersive distribution of my data set uh, using the Prussian blue and two cyanide SI. 
Well, once I have done my calculations using the, the R commander for the dietary supplement F, I could do the same thing for the another dietary supplement. For example, I can go to Microsoft Excel. Uh, I have in here the item mass determined for supplement V using four different colorimetric size, right? Uh, I can compare to choose, choose four data sets using just four results uh, using one away and of. I'm going to Microsoft Excel two pack, select one away and of. Uh, I am going to select the interval that I have in my data set. I have selected in here, uh, and I will select where I am. Where Microsoft Excel are going to show the results for me? Let me go into here and very well. I have my results in here. Uh, in here, I have my F critical value and my F calculated value. Once again, my P value was lower than 0 0.05. So I can say that she's for a side did not provide equivalent results, right? Uh, how can, uh, uh, how could I determine if out as a size are different or if just one of the size is different from the other three? How could I look for equivalence and non-equivalence between which is for a size. How could I do that? Well, I have my R commander. Uh, my data set already was loaded in R commander. Now I just need to go to statistical tests. I can go to graphs. Uh, you can, uh, you have a series of graphics that you might do in R commander. But I strongly recommend that you begin your statistical analysis doing box plots. So I'm going to do a box plot for iron mass in data supplement V now. I'm going to apply. Okay. And I'm looking for, and I am looking for my box plots. Uh, as I observed, for the another dietary supplement, we have a higher interquartile range for Prussian blue and two cyanide size, where my lower interquartile range came from the salicylate side. Uh, I have my medians in here. I can see that the median of the salicylate and two cyanide size are very close. I can also see that the median values that they have determined using uh, gallic acid is very close from those determined using two cyanide and salicylate side. Uh, and they can see that the iron mass determined using the Prussian blue aside are very different from the iron mass determined using the another three a size. So I can say that gallic acid, two cyanide, and salicylate size provide equivalent results. But our, our results obtained using the Prussian blue size, a size were different from the results obtained using, using this other three size. It is well visualized in here. Well, what I can do now? Well, uh, you can confirm your findings using the 2K test. You are going to R Commander. You are going to Statistics, Man, One Away, Anova. And now I'm going to select Pairwise Comparisons and the Welsh F test. I'm going to apply. And they can see that our size are equivalent accepted by the Prussian blue aside that is no equivalent to uh, the other three size. Uh, I have observed in here that the, um, 
the Prussian blue was side have shown uh, have shown some sign. Oh, sorry, uh, I have to. I I I did not select the the, the V sample. I have selected the F sample. I have selected the F sample. Okay. And now I can confirm my findings. You can see that the Prussian blue assay is different from the other three assays. Look, uh, gallic acid and tyrosinide assays are equivalent salicylate and gallic assay are equivalent and salicylate and tyrosinide assays are also equivalent. Uh, you can also visualize your data set using dot plots. Here you have a dot plot. I'm going to do a dot plot for the iron mass determined in dietary supplement V. I'm going to apply and I'm going to OK. Uh, I can see that the my data obtained with the Prussian blue and Tusian other size uh, was very dispersed. Uh, my iron concent iron mass determined using the salicylate assay was less dispersed than it was with the Prussian blue and Tusian either side. Uh, gallic acid, uh, the data obtained using gallic acid uh, was uh, close, close dispersed as it was for the salicylate aside. And you can also visualize your data set using uh, histogram. When you do a histogram for the data obtained for the dietary supplement B, you're going to see this. Uh, observe that the Prussian blue and Tusian SI, the data was well distributed. I don't, uh, the right word was not well distributed, almost equally distributed. You can see that in here you have a, a higher value, but uh, all the values are close distributed. This, uh, I can see this for the Prussian blue assay and for Tusian either assay. Uh, my data set was less distributed than the... My data set was less distributed in the gallic acid assay and salicylate assay. Now you can see, for example, here and here, the histograms of the data set Obtained using just four calorimetric assays. Well, now you know how to use a commander. Uh, this data set that I have shown to you in Microsoft, uh, in Microsoft Excel uh, are provided in the description of the video. Uh, you have this spread suite. Uh, as a link in, in the video. And you already have uh, this spread suite as uh, a link in the video description. Uh, I always say this to my students, you can see this video, you can see this video and thinking that you understand it, but you are going to understand uh, just statistical tests when you take the data, load it, it in a recommender and do yourself all the calculations and generated all the graphics, right? Well, uh, so you can download the data set that they have shown in this video and do yourself in your home. You can take the data set from the description of this video, load it, it in your R commander and do all the calculations again. Well, this is the what I want to give to you in this video, but as soon as possible, we're going to insert uh, several other R project videos, R commander videos. Regards to everyone.